Let's Hello. bring in South Dakota Governor Christy <laughs> Noem for the latest on this to react to what we just heard. She also has a book coming out, mm -hmm. uh, Not My First Rodeo, Lessons from the mm -hmm. Heartland. It's on sale this coming Tuesday. Governor, great to have you mm -hmm. on the program this morning. It's great to be with you. It's been a wonderful week. Sure has. It sure yeah. has. Governor, you've been on the front forefront of this issue in so many ways. So personally for me mm -hmm. um, as well, when you passed that legislation to ban abortion based on the diagnosis of Down mm -hmm. syndrome, I think it's very interesting. We saw on CNN um, this past weekend, Anna Navarro, one of their uh, contributors, actually said out loud what so many of us have thought um, that they meant when they talk about abortion. And she said she mentioned a bunch of family members of hers that have um, Down syndrome physical disabilities she even mentioned autism which is a gr really you know pretty large population these days so my question to you is what did, what did you make of that and is that eugenics it is absolutely i think it's important that this country recognizes that every single life is precious uh, the decision that we had this week was one that passes now this authority down to the states where elected officials will make those decisions. In South Dakota, we had a trigger law in place already. So as of today, abortions are illegal in our state uh, and they're only allowed to save the life of the mother. And I think it's entirely appropriate that now we focus on taking care of women that are in crisis, that have an unplanned pregnancy and see what we can do to support them and make sure those babies end up in homes that are good, loving, adoptive homes or that we help those parents be parents. You know, Governor, you mentioned the trigger law. That's uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're the perfect person to, to ask this question of yesterday. Yesterday, mm -hmm. we had the Attorney General of Louisiana on. Tell us yeah. how that works. It's, it's, it's in effect immediately. Uh, we take that from the concept that it's a trigger law. What happens to, uh, to uh, abortion providers in South Dakota as of this moment? How do you enforce the law as of this moment? Like, what is the mm -hmm. lay of the land in South Dakota today? Well, Planned Parenthood had already stopped abortions in the state of South Dakota a month or two ago, so that was good news for us. But we had the state statute on the books that said if Roe v. Wade was ever overturned at the Supreme Court, then immediately abortions would be illegal in our state except to save the life of a mother. And so that went into effect, and what we will do is continue to focus on not punishing mothers or women, but what we will do is focus on those doctors who knowingly break the law to perform abortions in the state of South Dakota. Governor, what's your message uh, to the next generation? The debate over Roe has gone on for 50 years, yet you have a whole new crop of young people exposed to technology mm -hmm. and things that, that it was more of an acad not academic, that's the wrong word, but it was about rights and liberties before. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's your message to women and all Americans this morning as we move into this next chapter? Well, it's still about rights and liberties. It's about every single right or every single life having the right to live. And technology has developed, science has revealed more and more of what's going on in the womb. We know more today than we did 15 or 20 years ago. I think it's incredibly important that we use that science to recognize that every single life is precious and that it deserves to be protected under the United States Constitution. Yeah, it this seems- will pass. Go ahead. This will pass, Rachel. What I think is interesting when I watch all of the pundits on TV and the liberal media is that they're talking about this is um, a scare tactic as though the Supreme Court made a legislative decision. What this did with this decision that came out this week is it gave the authority to the states. It's going to allow us at the state level to make the best decision for our people. And so every state will make different decisions in South Dakota. We're standing for life. I hope every single state follows our example. Yeah, you're right. The pundits out there are definitely, and, and Democrat lawmakers are trying to scare women um, mm -hmm. and, and, and create fear, but it's also exposed a lot of ignorance about yes, the Constitution yes. and civics yes. and how this all works. It's just really interesting. It is. It says uh, what was interesting about um, how the decision was written was that specifically people don't have a constitutional right to an abortion, uh, that every life has value and that every life should be protected and that this will go to elected representatives by the people to make the decisions at the state level. Uh, Governor, uh, as we mentioned, you got a book coming out on Tuesday, uh, mm -hmm. Not My First Rodeo, Lessons from the Heartland. It's on sale on Tuesday. When was your first rodeo? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't remember. I bet I was probably seven or eight years old. So, you know, it, this is a book that's not necessarily about politics. It's about my life lived so far, but it does have some political stories in it, things that people definitely do not know about me or my background or life, but also lessons. I love the way I grew up. I love my family. 
I think people will really enjoy it. I know a bit about your life story, Governor, and it is really fascinating. I, I'm actually really looking forward to reading this book. I don't know if you know, but Will was a ranch hand, yeah. and I think, and he loves she's competition. A, she's a real cowboy. And he loves. Let's be I careful. Know, I'm he all loves competitions. I would love to have you come down to Fox Studios, and we could do maybe a lasso contest. I think it's you on. You and Will. No, I think they're. No. No. What do you, are we, well, we go to the ranch and see you? We can do that, Will. And Will, I've got a cowboy hat with your name on it. So, oh, sweet. Um, I've got a horse ready. So we'll, we have a whole series of ranch rodeo events we can put you through. I have been around Buffalo. I've seen you on a Buffalo roundup. I have uh, been around some Buffalo. You've, you've rounded up some Buffalo too? I. You know what? One time I trailed. I had a trailer full of baby Buffalo that I hauled <laughs> from Aww. North Dakota, sorry, North Dakota, to, to Western Montana. And let me tell you something. Will? They're wild animals. They're not domestic <laughs> yeah. cows. They're wild animals. They <laughs> Will, I like you more and more every day. The more I hear <laughs> Thank your you, story. Governor. We're working on it too. But I'm I, betting on you, Governor, in that, um, in that contest. Oh, for sure. You know, that, we'll do that when next year we do the 4th of July from Mount Rushmore yes. with you. How about yeah. that? Absolutely. That's a deal. Let's do that. It's a date. All right. I love it. Thanks, Governor. Not, uh, the book is Not My First Rodeo Lessons from the Heartland on sale on Tuesday. Governor Christine Noem, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.